channel or if it's your first time stopping by welcome welcome uh i'm just going to um beg you please can you hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already you go shameless beg that's how we'll start this week so uh, actually not this week not this month this podcast where have i been Firstly, introductions. Um, so if it is your first time stopping by, um, my name is Dawn. I'm originally from Manchester, which is the northwest of England. And for, I think, 22, 23 years I've been living in the Netherlands, uh, not far from Amsterdam. And I live here with my partner, Lawrence, who's um, South African, not Dutch. And our uh, boys, Joshua and William, who were both born here. And our little furry critters, uh, Jack, who's our Parsons Terrier, and Daxter, who's our very fluffy ginger tomcat you might be able to hear him because literally as i put the camera on he decided he wanted second breakfast it's as i'm filming this it's sunday morning i'm not sure when i'll upload it because uh the admin side of uploading a podcast takes a while you know i like to do um time stamps uh text in the description box bit of editing maybe want to put something on the screen to show you so um hopefully by the time I've loaded it, it's only a couple of days after I've filmed. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, so the format of my podcast is usually um, I do a bit of a, a short life update of what I've been up to since the last podcast. I don't go into too much detail because if you don't know already, I do have another channel here on YouTube which is called Dawn's Days and that's a weekly vlog. I upload that every Sunday morning uh, around six o'clock in the morning um, Central European time. So usually depending on where you are you might be able to catch me really really late at night or super super early in the morning. Um, so I do get most of uh, most of the views around Sunday morning and then you know I, I can see different time zones vlogging in which is quite fun um I've had quite a few new subscribers on that channel as well so if you want to know more about me and see what I get up to living in the land of the clocks uh there'll be a link below uh so talking of links uh, you can also find me on uh, Facebook. I host a very small uh, a crafty Facebook group. It's called Crafty World One. Again, link below. Not been very active on that, I must say. And I've noticed if I'm not active, the group members are not very active. And um, well, I'll explain, you know, what I've been up to in a short while. Um, you can also find me on Instagram. Uh, I only use the one account, Dawn's Days, on Instagram but it's 95% craft related. So if you want to have a, if you want to see what I'm up to in between a podcast, um, head on over there. Again, links below to everything. Uh, I think that was everything I wanted to say to you. Yeah, did I tell you it's episode 22? I think I did. Uh, in case you're also interested, over on the Dawn Stage channel, there's a playlist there called uh, the Craft Workshop Podcast. Uh, which is where I originally started a pod crafting podcast and I did used to film that in my studio or workshop which is in my local art centre. I do still have it but I stopped filming there because I, lit I literally live under the flight path and it seemed every Sunday morning, every time I wanted to film a podcast, uh, the airport would go crazy and there'd be planes taking off so <laughs> I film here on my kitchen table. Um, I think that was everything. Yes. Okay, let's get stuck in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you why, explain why I've not been around for a while, uh, what I've been up to since I last filmed. Uh, elephant in the room, in case you're wondering, this is my natural hair, <laughs> not my natural hair colour. Actually, it is my natural hair colour, but I'm now like 50% grey, so it, I am this dark naturally. And um, yeah, so this is, I have this strange wave in my hair. Um... Um, a lot of people at work they mainly have been asking if I had my hair cut. Actually, I'm growing my hair, uh, but I've not left it to go wavy uh, because I'm growing it. I'm just um, I'm just growing my hair because I would like to have a little bit more length on it. Uh, it was uh, about four or five months ago. This bit here was like up here. I had like this really sharp concave or wedged bob so anyway this is my nap this is me it's a bit damp because i've not long got out of the shower um so yes i've not i've not changed my hairstyle as such i've let it grow and i'm just letting it to do its own thing uh so the reason why since i last spoke to you i think in the last episode i told you if you're not interested by in this there is time stamps below so you can hit the time stamp and fast forward if you don't want to hear me blathering on about uh 
what we you know what I've been up to. Uh, so since I last spoke to you, I came down with another flu virus. So I had one in January, and then lo and behold, I had another one in March, and it was it was pretty nasty. I did a test; it was negative. I don't know what that says. I felt ill. <laughs> I was actually flattened out. I think two or three days, I just lay down in the bed, couldn't do much, uh, and then I came through it with like this weird dry, itchy, irritating cough and then I self-diagnose and I'm pretty, I'm like 99.9% .9 certain that it's an, I'm now left with an allergy. I used to have hay fever as a child. I think by the time I was in my early 20s, I'd completely grown out of it. And I think there's a, there must be a particular tree at the moment that's just setting me off. And I came to that deduction because out of desperation, I took an allergy pill and what do you know, I stopped coughing. Saying that, it's quite bad today, so there might be a lot of stopping and starting uh, if I have a coughing fit, hopefully not. Uh, I have got a trusty old instant coffee. Sorry, this might trigger some people. I do use my winter and <laughs> Christmas mugs all year round. I know that might trigger some people. I'm not going to apologise. I love my Christmas and winter mugs. So I've got a trusty old instant coffee. And that's still warm in case I do start spluttering, but hopefully, hopefully we're fine. Um, so yeah, that sort of floored me and then trying to figure out what this, you know, this cough thing was and, um, as a result, I didn't do a lot of crafting. I'm saying that, but the table and floor is full. So I'm going to try and keep it into around an hour mark. Uh, and then the other thing that I had going on, uh, was, um, I was finally diagnosed with sleep apnea. Now, um, I've, I've only been, there's four, apparently there's four stages of sleep apnea, with the worst being chronic, and the second to worst is moderate. I was diagnosed at the very, very lowest end of moderate. Um, trouble sleeping, stopping breathing a lot. I think 15, on average 15 times an hour, I was stopping breathing. Um, busy with the hospital, very various doctors, etc. And as a result, I've got the diagnosis, and I'm now using what they call a CPAP machine, which I basically sleep with this uh, mask that covers my nose and mouth, and it's forcing air into my airways um, all through the night to stop them uh, closing. Uh, it's pretty certain weight has a contributing factor, but more so my place, my whole jaw has moved. Old age, I don't know. Um, the actual, the dentist told me it had moved and um, the only way around it is to have a major operation where they literally and then shift it back. We're not going to do that. The hospital advised against it. The dentist advised against it. It is what it is. Uh, I'm coping okay-ish with the CPAP machine. I have good days. I have bad days. I'm slowly starting to feel like I've got a bit more energy, which is helpful. Uh, but I can't say it's been a miracle cure as yet. I think next week, as I'm filming this next week, I've got my midway point uh, hospital appointment, see how I'm getting on with the machine, if they need to tweak things or give me new equipment, whatever. I'll keep you updated on that. And then the other thing, which is really exciting, uh, Lawrence and I, uh, at Easter, on the Easter Monday, uh, we've had terrible weather here in the Netherlands, as I think a lot of Western Europe has experienced uh, or like northern uh, northwest geography is not a strong point um, but we had it was a bit of a crummy day on the bank holiday Monday the Easter Monday uh, I saw there was a local boat what I thought was a boat show the weather was kind of going to be dry so we just went in the car turned out it wasn't a boat show as such it was a, a boat dealer having an open day and um, we ended up buying a new boat. <laughs> now, if you watch the vlogs, you'll have seen the boat and you'd have been on the boat with me. And um, if you've been around uh, on that channel for a while, you'll know we've had a boat for quite a few years. And this is actually our third boat now. Not the third, we don't own three boats, but every time we've sort of, we've tried to sort of upgrade, upgrade. The third boat, in my opinion, let me know if you've seen it. It's a serious upgrade. Lawrence and I are thrilled to bits with it. So uh, we've only been out on it once. And um, hopefully hopefully this afternoon we might get out on it again. The weather's still a bit iffy. It's a bit windy. But we'll see. We'll see. So I think that's everything. Yeah. I think that's everything I've been up to. I think so. So what have I got to talk to you today? Uh, talk to you about today? I've got 
I've got quite a bit of knitting. Sorry, I just had a cuddle of the dog before I... I'm probably covered in white dog hair. Sorry about that. Uh, that Jack is white he, and he's he's very... he's a, He's got like a wiry um, coat, so he sheds a lot. So bear with me. Um, so I've got a lot of knitting to talk about. Uh, I've got a bit, a bit of crochet. Uh, and then I've got, I'm looking, I did make a few notes. Then oh, I've got some sewing to share with you. And then I've got what I'm going to call an other craft, which is very eclectic. And I've got, um, I've got a couple of incoming to share with you. Uh, so yeah, I don't know this, the theme might be, might be a little bit, uh, finishing, finishing or trying to finish long, long term projects. I think that's what the theme might be of this podcast. We'll see. Right. Where do we begin? Um, where possible in the description box below, I'll, if I can't link something, I'll at least put some text that will help you, you know, Google or search for it yourself. Because sometimes I purchase things from Amazon.nl, the Dutch version. And they're, they're slightly different from, you know, the .com or the .co.uk or whatever. So then I'll just say the name of what it is, type that in. Right. Um, I kind of, I think did, in the last podcast, did I tell you I'd kind of gone off? I'd lost my sock, Joe. Well, it seems to be back with a vengeance. I think in the last podcast, I shared with you that I've just cast on these um, socks uh, I can't remember what they were exactly. They're by, the, the yarn is Lana Grossa, uh, just my plain vanilla recipe sock. Uh, I will list the, the number and everything below, uh, and it's also in last in episode 21 as well. So, absolutely loved this. And because it was coming up Easter, it just reminded me of an Easter egg. So I beavered away, whipped these up in no time. Uh, my recipe is... Um, 64 uh, um, stitches cast on, two by two rib. I do anything between 12 and 15 rows on the cuff. I'll do top down. My favorite needles are the Chai Gu uh, red lace, uh, fixed, not the interchangeables. Um, and I like a 2.5 millimeter. So if you don't know anything about knitting, that's probably a load of gobbledygook. Uh, so, and then um, I just knit to the length I like. I, you, nine times out of ten, I like. I do like the heel flap and gossip. I like picking up the stitches. A lot of people don't like to uh, knit, 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 knit. And then my um, go-to toe that I can I pretty much memorise. I think it's called a wedge toe, where you basically decrease every other row and then you Kitchener. Uh, I thought that was a hole there. No, it's just dimpled in a bit. And you Kitchener the rest of the toe. I usually do mine till about ten. 20 in total, 10 on each stitch. Um, I don't I don't knit with DPNs. I have got DPNs, I don't like them. I always end up losing stitches and getting confused of what needle I'm on. So I've found the magic loop method is my tried and tested trusty formula. So, right, well, I finished one of the, one of these and then, then, I, then I became sick, but I was still trying to push on just trying to keep myself busy, uh, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't working, I wasn't able to work because my, I just had this horrible headache and my sinus and everything, but I was just doing something mindfulness, you know, when I just, when I couldn't sleep, just to keep me busy. So, um, who knows, who knows here, most of you do, my wonderful, my beautiful, lovely friend, my bestie, Jeanette who's from Crafty, Crafty Clegg's Creation. Anyway, uh, last year, Tim, Jeanette's uh, hubby, uh, dyed this amazing self-striping yarn for Easter. And I missed out on it. So I messaged Jeanette. I saw he was, Tim was dyeing it again. And I said, please, 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 can you put one aside for me? I want to, I want to buy uh, the, the matching project bag and the yarn. And she said, no, you're not buying it. I'm gifting it to you. She's very naughty. And um, it arrived just before Easter. I did almost finish them in time for Easter. So this is kind of incoming slash knitting. So firstly, oh my gosh, look at that. Oh, look at that project bag. How, how cute, how cute. Oh, sorry, my hair is going to my eyes. How cute is that good egg? So I think Jeanette had two colour variations and she asked me, I said, oh, I love the blue, I love the blue. So, and then 
uh, there was something else I'll share with you in the incoming and the this is the yarn I've got I've actually got loads left I've not weighed it but I've got this much as I, I caked it myself oh no actually do you know what I'm, I'm lying Jeanette caked it for me because I remember at the time I was like oh I don't know I'm caking and then um I opened it and I went oh she's caked it for me so that's why I just got stuck straight in and then there was this super cute little tag on it on the yarn cake that they'd made and it says a uh, crafty clegs dream egg how do you knit yours how cute is that the little uh light bulb stitch marker and then on the back uh you can um note down the uh the length uh is 400 meters uh the blend is 75 percent merino 25 percent uh, nylon and the color weight is how do you knit yours so if you want to keep a track you know, a lot of people do like they they you know write down the pattern they use, uh, the weight left of the yarn left over, what it was, etc. Notes about the pattern they use. So how nice is that? Or if you're into journals, making journals, that'd be a super cute little tag in a journal, a knitting journal. So I've got quite a lot left of that. And then and she also she sent these so cute little uh, needle. Um, needle stoppers little highland coos if you don't know what a needle stopper is i haven't got an, oh i've got a needle no i can't show you that because that's going forward it's got it's got a little put, um hole in the end you put it on your needle and then it stops your stitches falling off seriously if you expect if you use dpns you need a needle stopper so that was in it and then um i finished the sock i'm gonna pop one in a, on a sock blocker i finished it I whipped it up in no time. Again, usual recipe. Didn't change it up. I just, I just needed some like mindfulness knitting, you know, where I just could zone out and relax. And so, and it looks just like the Cadbury's version of the good egg. How nice is that? Oh my gosh! And I tell you what. It knitted. It's a little bit toothy, a little bit of tooth, and which I love, but it knitted beautifully. It was like butter. Seriously. So that was my uh Easter cast on and finished whip. Told you I was on a roll with the sock knitting. And then um and then I got a little bit sort of I thought, you know what, not bored because I do I love knitting vanilla, vanilla socks. Occasionally I'll just lose my my, my sock joe and then uh I, and, you know i don't knit any for a while and then when when i'm on it i'm on it and i thought i just fancy doing something a little bit different i fancy just knitting on plain wool but a pattern so i had a look had a look had a look and then i found this i don't know if i've got a picture of it oh gosh it's what well, i always print mine off we recycle a lot here in the Netherlands. Oh, yeah, this is. I haven't got a picture of them. Maybe I can put one on the screen. We'll see if I can find one. Um, it's the cozy autumn socks. I think it was free. And who's the pattern by? Cozy autumn socks. I don't think it says on this. Or maybe I didn't. Maybe I just printed off what I needed off the pattern. No, it doesn't say who it's on here. Okay, well, I'll put it in the details below, but, they, but the pattern is called the Cozy Autumn Socks. Now, I don't think my yarn choice was the best. So, uh, what I'll do, I'll put uh, what I've, made, I've knitted so far on the... Sorry, I've got scraps of paper everywhere. I'm trying not to put them in my coffee cup. What I've knitted so far on a sock blocker, so you can get an idea whoop, of how the pattern's working up. So I, just, I just fancied something lacy and something that I've not done before. I was just in the mood for, you know, shaking it up a bit. So I don't even know if, oh, wrong way. I don't even know if you can see the pattern so well. Sorry, bear with me. I'm not very well prepared, am I? Yeah, that's right. Um, I've actually bought two shades of this Elise um, sock yarn and I chose the darker one and in hindsight I don't know I don't know if it was a wise choice but anyway I'm not casting them on again I will 
I'm actually really enjoying the pattern. And now I'm actually only, I'm only, I'm on the, um, I'm on the, can you see that? Is it showing up in the light? Yeah, I think you can see it. So now uh, I'm on the uh, decrease, uh, the, the foot gusset decrease. And then I'm only knitting the pattern on the top of the foot from here on. So it'll, it, this should work up pretty quick. It, it had, it did work up quite quickly. Um, being tired and not well, I don't know if it was a wise choice, but I've just really took my time. I've had to pull it back a few times. I don't think I've got the ball band for this still. If I, oh, I have you in luck. I've still got the ball band. So this is, this is the wool that I bought from my, my local yarn supplier. Um, he always has a stroll on the local market on a Friday. I've got my glasses. Oh, it looks in full of fluff again. Uh, so this is Elise Superwash Artisan. It's a special print effect, but that's not print. So that's what it is. Uh, this dark colour is, it, the number is 873. And it's machine washable, 75% wool and 25% polyamide and then I bought I bought like a, a nice pale green in it I don't know if it's shown up on the camera it's lovely it's like a nice forest green sprucey colour not like that racing green it's got a bit more grey cool tone to it anyway I think you know I'm, ha I'm enjoying it I'm happy you know getting the stitch definition it is beautiful the pattern's lovely it's very well written and very simple and I'm pretty sure pretty sure it was free we all love a free pattern don't we right so that's all my I'm brought you up to date with all my sock knitting I think but I'm st I'm not done with not done with knitting yet is this bag this is also one of Jeanette's bags <laughs> with bees on it gorgeous isn't it right so I'm not done with knitting yet. Uh, I've also, in in my last podcast, sorry, I'm going to slurp, bear with me. In my last podcast, I shared with you that I don't know if I, if I was planning to cast on the area or area shawl or I had cast it on. I can't remember. And I just had, had problems with the yarn choice. At first, was, I, I thought based on a conversation I'd had with them at Yarndale, I thought I could knit it in um, sock weight. So I bought a box of um, tiny little, little mini skeins from um, Cuddlebum Yarns at Yarndale because they'd knit, they they had a, the, a finished shawl, the area shawl on the stand and I specifically asked, they said yeah, it was knitted using these little minis. Anyway, I think it was one of you guys mentioned that the pattern called for sports weight I think anyway then I decided I shopped from stash and I had a ball like a cream ball of um wool 100% wool and it kept breaking and then after jo rejoining it I don't know how many times I got sick to death of it and I thought you know what I'm not inspired by my stash I can't it's not finger fingering weight or you know sock yard I popped my local budget store it's not a knitting or a wool store, but it sells, I think in the UK, it's a little bit like B&M bargains or maybe, uh, I don't know, what would you say in the States? Like Target or something like that. Uh, so we we have several of them here in the Netherlands. Of course we do. One of them is Zaman's and their wool is actually really good quality and um, it's very affordable. Popped in Zaman's. And I thought, you know what, let's have a look what they've got. So I picked up a couple of balls each of this. Uh, this one's Royal Batik. It's all acrylic. Uh, 100 gram, get 241 metres. I would say it's it's like, a, it's. I would say it's a DK. Slightly, slightly thicker than a DK. Slightly. What would that be? Would that be like a worsted weight? We don't have that in uh, the Netherlands, worsted weight. Whenever I've used it, I've used, I've done a DK pattern with it and it's been fine. Uh, and it's very soft and it, it washes like a dream. So it's acrylic. So I bought this and then I just wanted plain cream uh, in their royal um, range, but they didn't. They only had cream in royal shine 
I don't know if the camera's pick if I get it in the sun. I'm sat under my um skylight. No, I don't know. Maybe a little, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. There's like uh an iridescent stellina running through it, and I thought it was 229 for that and 229. And I thought, you know what, for less than five, it was just over five euro. I'm just gonna go for it. So I did. So I cast it on. Uh made a mistake. I think I actually realised the mistake on when I was talking about it on one of the vlogs, and I thought, just crack on dawn, it doesn't matter. So um since I last spoke about it on the vlog, I've not done much on it, but uh yeah, it's it's mainly German short rows, and you can see here I've got my short row back uh, upside down. When I did the top sh the top short short row, I did it on the bottom and vice versa. It's fine. I'm not frogging it. I don't care. It's only for me. So it's um this is the area shawl, and uh, there are all these leaves, and uh, yeah, you can see there's the mistake there. And um, so I think using the variegated wool, it works perfectly with it. Uh, and getting some lovely leaves on it and obviously need to tie, weave in a lot of ends and then I'll just love the transition of it and it's actually it's knitted up beautifully it's all done in garter stitch and German short rows now if you don't know what a German short row is it sounds very scary very complicated it's super 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 easy so just go on YouTube have a look at a few videos it's you know not this some videos that click with you and some don't uh, so I won't recommend um, a specific video yeah that's just, that's what I said I got mixed up with my German short row because on one side you're increasing and uh, on, on the other you're, you're decreasing got it mixed up do I care no it'll probably block out quite easily it's a shawl uh, this is what it looks like made up so I've got a way to go yet till I'm on the the point of it and then I think once I'm up to here oof, I'll whiz through that uh, so the area shawl is by uh, uh, Linnea, Linnea uh, Orn Ornstein and um, it's a paid pattern and I got mine off Ravelry so that's what it looks like so it's lovely so I'm glad actually, I, I'm calling it a happy accident because I'm, I'm really, really pleased with my yarn joints now. It looks lovely. Oh, I should wind some up, it's going to end up in a tangle. Okay, I've cleared a little bit, I've cleared a bit. Um, I've got a couple more knitting things and then I'll move on to the crochet. Uh, so if you're still here and you don't like knitting, well done, maybe you want to take it up. <laughs> uh, what do, I do, oh yeah, here. No, actually... Did I tell you in the last podcast I was doing the um, Year of Dishcloth again by Garlane, who's the kitchen sink shop? Did I tell you that? Anyway, I, I think I did January and then I just fell off the wagon because, you know, I'd, I'd flew at the beginning of the year and then I got it again and I've just... Anyway, she... I think this is April's dishcloth and I can't for the life of me remember the name of it. And I didn't even bother printing the pattern off because it's literally a four-way repeat. I don't know if I'm pleased with the yarn choice because you can't see, it's like a mixture of garter and um, stocking. Well, you can clearly see the stocking. I don't know, I'm persevering. This was like a really cheap budget yarn that I bought from, an, again, another local um, store here in, in um, the Netherlands, um, uh, Action. And um, I don't know if I like it, because you can see here on the tail, it's uh, it's a bit splitty and then it's got this like little bobbly bit running through it. So I'm kind of, I don't know, I'm doubting my yarn choice. I might carry on, we'll see. As I said, it's mindless knitting. So I'm knitting these on uh, four, four, actually I think usually with Garland's dishcloth you do it on a 3.25 millimetre. And I went up to a four millimetre just because... I haven't even got the ball band anymore. I, I think that's what it calls for between a three and a half and a four millimeter. I'll see. These are on the Knit Pro Zing, the interchangeables. So I'm gonna. I'm kind of. I'm thinking about it. I'm of a. I'm of a mindset at the moment that if I, if I, even if I've cast on something or I've bought something to make something, if I'm not feeling it, I'm just not doing it. I'm just not pressurizing myself. Because what I know about myself is when I feel when. I, 
when when I feel or I have to do something, I don't want to do it. Um, I'm going to share a really, really old blast from the past. So when I finished the two vanilla socks, I didn't have anything else, just plain knitting on the go. And I thought, you know what, Dawn? You've got plenty of whips. I know just the project for you. Y you're all going to gasp. I bet everybody thinks I've given this up when you see it. I'm going to have to be careful because I've got two balls on the go. Because I'm, I'm kind of blending them in in case there's a colour difference. Who remembers this? I've actually, I've actually knitted a lot on it. This is, it's a free pattern, um, the J Sweater by Rachel Brock Brockman. I think I cast this on about three years ago now. And in fact, this is the first sweater I ever cast on and I didn't finish it because the colour work on the yoke, I flew through it. It was, I'd never done colour work before and I'd never knitted a sweater before and I just threw myself into it. This colour work, I just flew through it. Oh, I loved it. It's full of mistakes, but it doesn't matter. And then I got bored. I split for the sleeves and then I just got really, really bored. Now, I did move the stitch marker, but I'm pretty sure when I last spoke about this on the podcast, I'm pretty sure the stitch marker was about up to here, but I moved it because I measured uh, how far I've got to go for the, um, when I get to the ribbing. Uh, and so I'm, I've just, instead of getting a new stitch marker, I moved it. So this is, this is what I've knitted on in the last couple of days. And then I think I count, Lawrence helped me measure it. I think I would need about, I think it was 12 or 13 centimetres to go to the ribbing. So I'm probably like halfway there and then I'm almost at the ribbing. I'll whip through the sleeves in no time. So what I've told myself, I've had a word with myself, Dawn, why don't you aim to get this done by July? And that can be a finished object for Christmas in July. And if I finish it before, whoopee, and if I don't, but I'm really, really enjoying it again. What a mess. The tension is just terrible. It's really bad. Do I care? No, I don't. I actually, I've fallen back in love with this again. To the point where I might even, when um, when I've finished it, I might even cast another one on. I am tempted. But then I've got loads of patterns for colour work. I fancy a colour work cardigan next. Or I'd never got onto that hype of the Whitmore sweater, is it? But then uh, she brought out um, a Whitmore cardigan. I don't know if I fancy a cardigan. Oh, that because that's what's happened since I last spoke to you. Guess what I taught myself to do? At Pearl Continental. And I've got really good at it. I've been trying to Pearl Continental for two years and I just couldn't, I just couldn't get my head around it where your finger goes. And, it's, and I thought, you know what, Dawn? You taught yourself to uh, knit continental. Cause I, I was taught to knit when I was seven, English style. You know where you throw, uh, you throw over, I think it's called, uh, by my lovely um, Auntie Christine, RIP. And um, I can knit quite fast English style, but it hurts my, um, my neck and my shoulder, as does crochet as well. And that's why I push myself to learn continental. Love it. I've got really fast at it, but not the pearling. So I just, I knuckled down. I was like, you know what? You're going to master this. And I did. I watched loads and loads of YouTube videos. I knew in principle how it worked. But everything I watched, I didn't like how you held the yarn. And I thought, you know what? You know which way there's, you know which way to wrap round. You know all that. You can do it. Figure out how you want to hold your hand. So I now hold my hand. I actually pinch it. There's no video like it. <laughs> but it works for me. I don't find it uncomfortable and I actually am a pincher with my, when I crochet, I, I'm a yarn pincher. I don't, I'm not, I, I'm not a, 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 a wrapper. I'm, I don't tend to knit or crochet that way. I'm a pincher. So there you go. I've taught myself to uh, knit at Pearl Continental. I'm thrilled to bits. So I'm on the lookout for um, a cardigan either a colour work cardigan or a lace cardigan, something not too complicated that will keep me interested, not too much knitting, but with enough, to, with, with um, you know, stockinette so I can pearl a bit to hone my skill. Let me know if you've got anything. Uh, I think that's it. That's everything. Yeah, I'm done with the knitting. Right, I've got, I've got a little bit of crochet to share with you. 
I'm not going to show you the Noel Dine patch because um, I've crocheted all the granny squares except the corners. Yeah, the, the little corner squares. I've not done them yet. I'm busy sewing. Not, so I'm not, I didn't do the join as you go method because I don't like it. It doesn't work for me. So I'm actually whip stitching by hand all the panels. And it's so boring. I'm like, there's only so much headspace. When I show you what I've got, what I'm working at the moment, you're going to be like, good luck with that. So I'm not going to show you that. I am steadily, you know, as the mood, I'm trying to push myself. And um, so again, I'm aiming for Christmas in July to finish that. That's what I've set myself the goal for. I think I'll be fine. But old whips, Aria Shaw, can you guess what I'm going to talk about now? I picked up another old whip. I think this is only a year old. But I just lost the will to live. I love making granny squares, but there is a limit. We've all got a limit. And these are little granny squares. But you know what? Picked it up. Oh, bear with me. Sorry. It's not in a project bag as such, but it's in... I love this, even though it's got all coffee and God knows what spilled on it. <laughs> this uh, canvas uh, tote bag from Scapiers. Isn't it lovely? I'd show you the clean side, but it's plain. So you're left with, it's grubby. It's had everything spilled on it. It's been all over the place with me, this. When I finish this project, I'm going to put it in the washing machine. Right, who remembers this? This is the, so it's not the area shawl, area shawl, but it's the area granny square cardigan. I think this was a year ago I cast it on and because I went for the size I think this is also free I I went for the XL I had to where does it say I had to crochet 68 68 of these granny squares and then was it 18 yeah 18 half grannies with the half grannies, I've got I've got, I've got it marked down here. I've got eight to, eight half grannies to do, and then I can start the joining. Oh my gosh, joy! So this is the colour that I went for. If you want to see, that's the colour of my Aria Aria Ariana Ariana cardigan. So I want to get that finished because, as you can see, it's bulky. It's taken up a lot of space at the side of my sofa and I would just prefer that to be made up and upstairs in my closet that'll be a lovely autumn be a nice summer um summer evening um like a, a shacket a shacket is it uh I won't put buttonholes on it because I never fasten cardigans but yeah that's um yeah that's it so I'm slowly working on the no nine patch I'm gonna get this finished the Aria Ariana sorry I'm thinking the Aria Shawl and the Ariana cardigan. Uh, and then I'm kind of, I'm still, mm, I'm not back into my amigurumi at the moment. I won't lie. I'm just not feeling it. I know Elise from Les Petit, no, not Les Petit, say crochet. Les Petit, Les Petit Saint Rose. Elise has just released a pattern. What was it? I test, I test crocheted her little piggy for her. What did she do now? A wolf, was it? No, she's done the wolf. She's done the pigs. Oh, gosh, oh, that's terrible, isn't it? Anyway, I'm thinking of having a go at Lee's latest pattern. But I'm not... I... What is that noise? I think something is loose on the table. Sorry, I don't know if you heard that. Freaked me out there. Do you know what? I, I thought it was a wasp. <laughs> it sounded like a wasp. Like it, like the wings. Um, so yeah, and then uh, there was something popped up on my Instagram for a new pattern. I can't remember it. I am going to buy it. It's a, it's a paid for pattern. As Ali's pattern is paid for as well. But I will buy them. As I want to make them, I'll mention them to you. Uh, so that's it with the yarn stuff. I've got some sewing to show you, and then I'll move on to other crafts. The sewing. So I think. I think in the last video, the last podcast, I've shown you, uh, I think I've shown you, three, was it three, 
of these little geese. This is my own pattern. I hand drew it on a piece of paper, cut it out, and it's my own pattern. These are painted. It's in like linen. I don't and I've aged them. I don't I don't know if the light's a bit bright. They're very they're like a bit old vintagey. Uh this one I've not done anything with yet, I will do. They're just scrap fabrics. So well, I was really enjoying them. So what do you think I did? I, I did three more. <laughs> what are you going to do with them, Dawn? I don't know. I think I'm just going to put them in a bowl. I just, these are all my little favourite patterns. It's like a little strawberry print. Oh, if you're a quilty, you might know these patterns. Because I think, I think the most, I think these three are quilting fabrics. I don't know where this is. From. I think this is from one of these cheap, you know, scrap fabric things you buy from the local budget stall but anyway so I've not done eyes yet on them so I will do eyes I don't know if I'm gonna paint a beak on like I've done with these that's painted in acrylic but I will age them I'll I'll grubby them up a bit I might just put an eye like French knot an eye on them that's the painted eye I might French knot an eye on each side and just grubby them up a bit and then just have like a bowl of geese I mean, why not? What's not to love about a bowl of geese? <laughs> oh, I just like them. They feel so nice as well. I suppose, I suppose I could hang them off a, oh gosh, I'm going to drop them. I could hang them off um, a bit of string and make, make a bunting out of them. We'll see. So yeah, that was a bit of mindless sewing. And then... Uh, I bought this kit a long time ago. If you've been around a while, you'll know I've got a very old, like a vintage dollhouse that I'm, it's a labour of love. I've done, I've done the ground and the first floor and now I'm busy working on the attic. Well, saying that, I've not worked on it for months and months and months. But um, this is a kit that I bought from um, one of the dollhouse fairs I went to quite a few years ago. And it's from... Um, it's from a lady who I actually know who has a fantastic um, shop. Uh, no, I haven't. Um, I haven't got the card in it. It's uh, Anya. Anya. Uh, Anya's designs. And then I bought this kit. And this is by Haas Design in Rosendale. It's a handwork atelier. I think that might be at Anya's. I thought Anya's shop was called Anya's Handwork. Or is it Handwork Atelier? I don't know. Anyway, waffle waffle. Um, I can't find... I've only got the chart here. I can't find a picture of the finished item. But anyway, it's so it's you get this little uh, stool. It's a little bit like a piano stool fluff stuck on it uh it's just got this little padded cushion and then in the tiniest cross stitch you can imagine um this is what i'm making the um i don't even know if my camera's picking up the stitches are so tiny this is the top of the little stool for the doll's house i haven't got a piano in the doll's house i'm debating whether to get a stand-up piano because it's not big enough to have a grand a baby grand evening because it's pretty stuffed full now but I might be able to find a wall for a stand-up piano and then this could be the little stool that goes with it but um it's more the the, the embroidery floss is more rust and I thought it was red it's still nice I love it I love it and the reason I hadn't done it is a it's very intricate and it's a bit heavy on the eyes but also I didn't have a tiny embroidery hoop as you can see it's just about fits now what you can do is you can stitch stitch your ada on a bigger piece of fabric of you know and then just stitch it and then snip it off but i, I wanted a hoop so i've got actually i've got this hoop from uh it's a danish store it's a sustran grena is it or sustran gren a grain green I don't know how you pronounce it sorry my danish isn't very good and um yeah so i've made a start on, i've done quite a lot on it actually so I think width-wise, it'll be this. I think that's the edge, so it'll be that that wide. And then, obviously, not as deep. So not much to do, but my gosh, 
you need to concentrate. I have probably made a mistake on it, but I mean, gosh, who's going to know? So that's um, that's all the sewing stuff I've been working on. I'll pop that away in a minute. Uh, and then other crafts. Oh, I, I, I thought I'd share with you. I did, I did finish, kind of finish some stuff. My mini miniature room box, I gave up on it. It's in the naughty corner. I just didn't like that uh, I made the mistake with the outside wall and that the paper's there. And even if I paint over it, you're still gonna see, even though it's a fraction of a millimeter, you can still see that there's paper underneath it. You know, there'll be like, um, it won't be as smooth. So I'm debating what to do about that. I don't know what to, to, to like, um, put like a panel on it on the outside. You know, make it like a faux panel or maybe I was also thinking with e with egg carton boxes the cardboard ones to put uh like stone so it looks like brick on the outside I don't know anyway as a result it's in the naughty corner but I think I made some progress on this since I last spoke to you again not finished this is how far I got with the stand I'm making for it to go on so oh, it's a bit of plaster there so I've painted this, it's glass, candlestick, so I've got to be super careful with it. Uh, it's chalk paint. And then I have I have made in um, air dry clay, I've made all these uh, moulds from silicone mould. I think I might have shared them with you last time. And then when it's, um, I've, all I've got to do is one more coat of chalk paint. I've not bothered with the top because you won't see it. Uh, and then I'm going to age it all. You'll see the you'll see what I'm going for when I show you the next make in a minute, which is actually something finished. Uh, and then when I'm completely done with that, then I'll probably either varnish it with a water-based uh, varnish, or I might uh, wax it. I'm tempted to wax it because in this state, if you scratch it, it comes off. So that's going to be the stand, isn't it lovely? I'm so pleased with how that turned out. I glued um I glued the uh the plaster reliefs on the clay reliefs on when they were wet so you could mold mold it around with um and I used PVA or wood glue to stick it on and they're fixed solid so put like this little sort of bevel around the edge yeah very happy with that um I did finish one thing I think I've shown you uh, that I was decorating one of those little balsa wood boxes. So I finished that. So again, this is all air dry clay. And then I did like these bands. Now they did, you know, I had to sort of match them up in places. So, you know, the, the joins not like that's joined. That's joined and it shrinks a bit as it dries. So they're not perfect. Do I care? They're just ornamental. So this is currently sat on my fireside at the moment. And then, um, are you picking it up in the light if I can get it? What I've done, I've painted it, it's the same chalk paint. And then I've, um, I've where the, you know, where there's the, uh, the, like the plaster work and the, around the edges, I've aged it with a little bit of uh, dry brushing, a tiny, tiny bit of brown uh, acrylic, dry, very, very dry brush. Just kept going at it, uh, you know, around the outside. And then I've also dry brushed it with uh, this gold. Is it showing? It is quite shiny, but then I, then I distressed it again. So it's not like brassy gold. It's it's just old looking. So, and then uh, the lid just come off, but I've done nothing with it. It's just, just an ornament. And then on the fire, I've got a little uh, pot uh, chicken, like a little ceramic chicken and um duckling sat just sat on top of it it's like a little display box so i'm super happy with how that turned out i mean i could have done more with it but i mean for a little cheap little balsa box i've still got two more because they were like nesting boxes and then one uh one of the other things i did uh again for my easter display is um i did a bit of decoupage these uh polystyrene eggs uh and then this is uh just a napkin and I just separated it. I think there was three layers to the napkin. I just kept separating until I got to the top layer. So it was almost like see-through, very, very fragile. And then with um, PVA, I just painted, sorry, it's quite shiny, the sun's moved. 
I just painted it all with like a, a gloss, a water-based gloss. Sorry, it's not picking up on camera. And then this is a fern napkin. So I made a few of these. These were on my Easter display. And then the other thing. So I've took the East, kind, most of the Easter themed things down. I've got one more thing to show you, finished object. And I've got one, I've got two things to show you for um, incoming. And then I think we're done. Cold coffee, but I've not coughed. Hurrah. Um, so I changed, I took most of the Easter stuff away. And then I thought, what do I want to do now? I want to do an East, a, a summer, spring, summer display that I'll just keep out now till autumn. I keep adding stuff. I'm always making knickknacks. Maybe the geese will go on there. Actually, I think they were on there somewhere. Anyway, this kept popping up on my Facebook feed. And then my friend Antoinette had bought one. And I'd seen it last year and I thought, no, I'm going to buy one. I'm going to treat myself. So this is, I think it might be a Dutch company. It's called Loberon, is it? Loberon. And um, it wasn't cheap, but I can't take it off, but it's in two parts. So the, it's a stand that you can display a wreath on. So I bought the stand. I think it was 40 something euro for a bit of metal. I, don't, I, I mean, I think it's quite good value. I'll use it forever. And then um, I hung a wreath off it. So I'm going to show you the wreath, but I hope, I hope you can see it. It's very heavy because it's like cast iron. So this is the stand. It's got like these four uh, little hooks. And then it's got this uh, lovely base on it. And you could get it either in like an off-white cream colour or this grey distressed. And then I've... I bought these ceramic birds from a local craft fair years ago. So I hung them off them. And then with ribbon, I just tied the wreath. So it's not a very good shot. So the, the wreath is suspended off the display. I think it's such a nice idea because you don't necessarily want to pin a wreath to your front door, you know, or hammer a nail in a wall. And so I think it's great and it's portable. Like if I wanted to, if I was having a nice, I don't know, like a nice lunch out in the garden i can put it out there make you can move it around to i'm gonna shake this up for the seasons oh my gosh it's so heavy uh so the wreath i already had oh my, my sorry oh my shoulder is i can't even tell you how heavy it is so this wreath i already had in my stash i think it's rattan is it i think so i've got one of my workshop at my studio all decorated for autumn so i might even bring that back for autumn that'll save me a job and then I've just uh, gone around with these um, faux eucalyptus and I think it's some kind of, supposed to be a blossom. Just really, really simple. Kept it nice and fresh. So, oh my gosh, I'm going to put that down. So I thought that would be a great idea. And then all I've done with the with the silk flowers, again, very cheap, with um, green um, gardening wire, I just t loosely tied them on. When I did it, it was with the mind that I can just take all the foliage out and then, you know, put autumn ones on. I might just just have four wreaths. I might just have, I might have a winter Christmas one, an autumn one, a spring summer, and maybe an Easter one. And then I'll just rotate them. And you can always, you know, take little bits and pieces off. So I think that's what I might do. But yeah, that's going to stay there now until uh, until we're in autumn. Um, I think that was everything. Right, I've got, uh, I've just got, I've, I've got loads of incoming because I'm just, I've been buying stuff like you can't believe, but I'm just going to show you two things. So, um, when Jeanette, um, sent me, um, the, um, the egg, um, project bag and yarn in the box, I've left it in the box. I've not touched it yet. So I wanted to show you. Uh, she also, I knew she'd been making this, um, Actually, she, she started it last year, but she's just not had time to finish it. So she said to me, I'm going to send you this journal that I've been making and then you can finish it off yourself. And I think it's a genius idea. Actually, if you're watching Jeanette, I think you should, I think you should sell these as kits. I think people would go for it. So she's made, I don't, it's like a signature, Frida Kahlo. If you know me, you know I love Frida. Right behind you, I've got a big picture of Frida sat on my kitchen wall. So she's made this beautiful 
uh, journal. It, I mean, it's stunning. And she's stitched on it and she's glued things in. And But as you can see, uh, and she's got uh, like stained paper. As you can see, it's blank because it's just lovely. Beautiful, beautiful. A little bit of lined paper. Well, I won't show you it all, but this is this is the centre. How lovely. I think Jeanette's binding is super nice. Look what she's put on the spine, what a great idea. Um anyway, she said, I, I wanna I wanna send this to you. I said, Great. And then she sent me all the ephemera in a little envelope. I mean, I love kits. I'm actually, I mean, if she'd have sent it me finished, I'd have been absolutely thrilled to bits because, you know, it's my friend and she's made it for me and I love stuff like this. But the fact that she's actually done the hard work and then given me the fun stuff. So I'm not going to go, I'm not going to show all of them to you, but I'm just, I'll pick out a few little things. There's loads of stuff here. Oh, it's going to be so nice. So now I've shown you, I can, uh, I can spend a quiet day you know just uh tinkering so she sent me like these this is a like a little tuck spot that you fold in half uh like little corners again to make tuck spots look like little embellishments you could stick them on a little piece of cardboard now if it's a dangly and these all kinds of stuff here again another little tuck spot little uh look tuck cards to make little oh, Oh, oh. make little notes I love this look at that picture thrilled to bits with it so ah, oh, it's a quote I paint myself because I am so often alone and because I'm the subject I know best isn't that sad or is it maybe she was happy being alone but yeah just what a genius idea because I don't know about you, but I, so I don't mind doing this of journaling. I like this bit, but it's the fussy cutting. So the fact that she's cut everything out from it and I can just stick away to my heart's content. Right, I'll put that back in the envelope in a minute. Uh, I don't want to lose anything off the table. And then, then there was one more thing. I've dedicated a whole video for this. I wasn't sponsored. I wasn't um it wasn't a collaboration it was a free gift a company reached out to me and said uh we we see you like miniatures uh would you like this kit for free they didn't ask me to do any promotion for them nothing which is highly unusual i think they're just confident about their kits and they let them speak for themselves on that video i'll put a link somewhere or below on that video uh, i unboxed the kit and a few of you said that you'd also done um um the, the, not the same kit but you've done um kits from this company as well sorry i don't know the camera seems to be sinking down a bit so um if you're interested i've always wanted a book nook which is basically a little like a diorama that sits somewhere on a bookshelf and if you're lucky has lights like a little miniature scene always wanted one and now I've got my own. So I've not done it yet. I'm going to treat it like a, a, a jigsaw puzzle. There's a lot with it. Uh, this is what they sent me. It's the uh, train mystery case. It's a bit like, I think the theme is Murder on the Orient Express. It's like an Agatha Christie um, model. And I'm just going to show you. That I I'm not going to get open the box now because there's a whole video about it. But when you take the sleeve off, uh, there's a beautiful presentation box with it i mean this if you know any crafters or people who like jigsaw puzzles this would make a cracking gift and the quality this is really heavy the quality is really good i've had these kits uh before you know i've um i was making who remembers i was making a little greenhouse kit i bought this kit from you know the local budget store it was very cheap and um it was i, I enjoyed it but I was getting a bit fed up with the mm, things didn't fit right and I had to do a lot of fiddling, which is fine because I'm a crafter, I don't mind it. But um, I had to, I had it all over the table here and then I had to move everything quickly. I think we had a dinner, friends coming over. And then um, 
stupidly I put it in the laundry room and then it got knocked over and some of the little bolster pieces accidentally got scooped up and put in the washing machine I gave up on it I've still got the frame of the greenhouse because I will do something with that at one point but uh, I'm really curious because this already just open unboxing it you can see a difference in the quality so um the company uh if you're interested is um it, you can see that logo cute b cute b and they do loads loads of different uh scenes this has got lights it's got a moving part so now i've shown you uh and when i'm feeling a bit better uh i might even wait to the end of the year i think this would be a nice autumn winter craft you know dark nights instead of doing a jigsaw puzzle i'll get lawrence to help me uh, one more thing, one more thing. I put this out and I was almost forgot to show you. Who remembers? I think it was one or two years ago. I did a, a workshop for um, tin embossing. So you make like the Mexican tin art kind of thing. I did a workshop on it. I did show you in the podcast some of the things I'd made and I painted. And so anyway, I've, I've struggled to find the tin to emboss of a good thickness and then I was in uh, Sustrin Grena or Sustrin Green uh, actually at the weekend and then they had this lovely gold embossing foil you can see how thin it is though I mean just I, I actually carried it to the car I didn't put it in a bag and just with the wind blowing it but I fancy digging out my box with all my embossing tools in it and doing something else because I think I wasn't really into journaling as such I so to be clear I don't write in a journal that's not my thing but I like making journals hence Jeanette's gift is like wow uh, and I thought what I learned with embossing would be fantastic with um, combining with making journals so I saw this it was just it's one sheet it was two euro eight cents so in pound two pound ninety eight uh, they don't have the dollar sign maybe they don't have them in in the US They've got Danish krona, sweet, they've got the Swedish krona, what is NOK? Norwegian and the Swiss uh, franc and euro and pounds. So it definitely seems more Scandinavian, Northern Europe. Well, naturally, if, it's got, if you've got the Europe, the, the Europe, the euro, then. Anyway, there's a couple of them open, opening up lately here and they're just fantastic. Right, oh my gosh, I'm all waffled out. What time is it? It's 20 past 12. I think I've waffled for about an hour. So, it feels good. I'm back in the groove again. Hopefully I won't leave it too long between uh, the next podcast. Um, although, um, in May, I'm off to um, Africa again. I'm, I'm going to, I think, did I tell you? Did I tell you in the last podcast I'd been to Kenya, went to Nairobi? I think I did. Anyway, I'm going back again at the end of May or mid-May I'm going back for uh, just over a week with work um, so work as you can imagine is very busy at the moment so I don't know how much crafting I'm going to get done between now and then so I'm not sure I'll try and be back in a month or so four weeks or so I mean there's nothing stopping me if I have like a massive spurt I could come back in a week you know it's I, I don't sort of put a time limit sorry I'm fiddling with this envelope I try not to put a time limit on myself I just I think if I can just give an update once a month, I think that's fine. Because, you know, there's that much on YouTube. You've got loads to watch and see and do. Um, but we'll see how it goes. Um, as I said at the beginning, if you want to just keep a regular eye on what I'm up to, you can head on over to Dawn's Day and watch the vlog, the weekly vlog. There's always a little bit of crafting chatter in that video. But also live stuff. I do shopping hauls, uh, go out exploring the Netherlands. I take you to different cities and we have a look around. Um, I, I talk about a bit of crafting. I talk a little, uh, do like clothing, makeup, you know, skin, all that kind of stuff. So if that's also your jive your jam head on over there so yeah i think i'm gonna wrap it up here so um thanks for tuning in again as i said at the beginning if you haven't subscribed already please please hit the button and help grow our little community uh and if it's your first time stopping by i hope you enjoyed uh spending your time with me thanks everybody for tuning in uh stay safe take care and i'll see you in the next video bye for now